Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. And I'm actually going to talk a bit more about exercise. So as Dr. Liu had alluded to, um, exercise is part of integrative medicine. And really going to talk about what components we should be thinking about with exercise, the types of questions that we should be asking. But exercise is really important and is a focus of this talk and, and most talks around cancer and cancer survivorship because it's probably the most powerful non-pharmacological agent we can use to improve our quality of life, lower fatigue, improve pain, improve our emotional well-being, improve our physical fitness, as I'll talk about. But this is really one thing that can help so many facets of our life. Um, so the question is, how do we integrate exercise into our life, and what are some th ways that we can get, get more fit? Well, one thing is we have to have sort of some sort of guideline around exercise, and, and we do. We have multiple guidelines now in the cancer survivorship setting about what we should do. And again, these are general guidelines. And so one of the reasons you would go to integrative medicine or come see me is because a guideline of doing 150 minutes of walking or aerobic activity, strength training, flexibility, these are all really important things to being more physically fit, but there are um, nuances to an exercise prescription, to doing exercise based on someone's exposures, based on the fact that they may have a history of heart disease before. And as a cardiologist, that would be something that I would deal with to help with your exercise. Um, but everyone comes from a different place. Um, and so one of the things that we really try to tailor at MD Anderson is figuring out an exercise prescription that works for you. Because if you, it's not working for you, you're not gonna do it. So we have guidelines that are in place that are very important. They're scientifically based to show that when you do these levels of activities, they do prevent cancer mortality, they do prevent reoccurrence in certain types of cancers, they do prevent cardiovascular disease. But again, following the guidelines is not going to help if you're not engaged, right? So how do we get engaged? Um, first of all, we need to know if someone says to do moderate intensity. So that's basically the guide, right, guideline right now. Um, what does that mean? So for doing a 30 minutes of moderate intensity activity is shown to have the best health benefits that increase our work of breathing when we do exercise. It means that um, moderate activity doesn't need to happen over a 30 minute or an hour period of time. For you, it might be five minutes. That's how much time is right for you to do exercise where you're losing your breath maybe when you're walking. Um, but again, uh, it really depends on where you're starting with your exercise. I have dealt with patients that have never exercised before and want to be more active during and after treatment to triathletes that have just been diagnosed and want to have an exercise prescription. So again, these are the types of questions that when you want to start an exercise routine, Dr. Liu or myself can answer, what does moderate mean for me? How, much, how many minutes should I be exercising? Help me get into it. These are the types of questions. I don't know why that went across the thing, but <laughs> maybe not to be sedentary, I don't know. I borrowed this slide from Karen. Um, so specifically around there's certain patients, especially patients that have, have questions about can they even do exercise, do I have a healthy heart. I have a program at MD Anderson called the Healthy Heart Program that makes sense because I'm a cardiologist. But one of the things that we do in that program is we talk about your heart risk factors and we also actually measure your fitness uh, objectively. We do a VO2 test which looks at your, which will help us understand what your true exercise intensity should be, uh, what your heart rate and your blood, blood pressure responses to exercise. I look at your heart, I look at your lung health. In certain situations, this is uh, a good idea for patients that have higher cardiovascular risk, might have symptoms of shortness of breath when they're doing activity. So again, every exercise prescription is different. Some people need these types of testing, some don't. But ask these questions of your providers. Um, because that's good. we want to eliminate the barriers to exercise because we know how important it is to our patients. 
other things in terms of staying on track with exercise. Once you have an exercise prescription, it's so important to be consistent because we can give each of y'all an exercise prescription um, and that can be great for a week, but really exercise is about being consistent with it. And so logging your exercise, having some type of accountability to what you're doing, whatever it is, um, is important in order to stay consistent. Setting goals. Now, when any of us um, as professionals talk to you about your exercise goals, we set things that um, not only are short term are reasonable for you, but we also set goals that help you get to the end of the month, the other two months. We talk to you about what are not only just the barriers to exercise, but what do you want to see at the end of doing exercise? What are your goals long term to be active? And obviously there's safety around exercise, not just with your cardio, cardio and your lung health, but also how you exercise, um, what type of clothing you use, how you're walking in your environment, um, if you're staying hydrated with your exercise. We kind of lose that component, or at least I do sometimes when I'm talking to patients about I want them to exercise, but there is exercise safety um, in addition to setting those goals and figuring out what's feasible for you. Obviously reward yourself. Um, and this is one way to keep active is, I, I was reading an article and I think it was Runner's Magazine. I have Runner's Ma Magazine. And they, these women were talking about how they always go and get donuts after they, you didn't hear this, Dr. Lou. I'm just, we're having a side conversation. But my point is, my point is, is that that there are important things that we need to do about our health, but no, I am a personal believer that you can't deprive yourself every once in a while, uh, especially if it keeps you going. Now, Dr. Lou might have a different approach to that, but. Um, and then again, and this gets back to the turtle that walked across earlier is, even if it's not just about exercise, it's about not staying, it's not being sedentary because we know that just standing, and y'all might have seen me, I was standing for most of the time before I sat down. Part of that is because just standing up, just not laying down prevents all those things. It prevents diabetes and cardiovascular disease. It helps overall. So even if you're setting small goals, just the standing 10 minutes every hour, you're, you're getting the benefit. Change isn't easy, but possible. Yes, you can start an exercise program, and we're here at MD Anderson to empower you to do that. We'll take where you are and help you have an exercise plan that works to you. Maybe we'll get to the guidelines, maybe we'll slowly get to the guidelines, but if you're um, invested in your health, as y'all are, because you wouldn't be here otherwise, we'll invest in, with, with you to help you develop an exercise routine. And with Dr. Lou, all other components as well, to maintain your health. And I think I'll end there. Thank you. Thanks so much. That was great.